Burgundy, France is home to some of the world's most famous and most expensive Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. And yet, it's still possible to find great values in this region. Hiding in plain sight between all the pomp and the circumstance, there are literally thousands of small, family-owned wineries that have been honing their craft for centuries. And that is where the opportunity lies. In the sub-region of Beaune, at the highest vineyard slopes, some of Burgundy's most elegant shards and pinots are being grown. We're gonna taste two such wines from the Haute Côte de Beaune in this experience. Beaune is actually known as the capital of wine in Burgundy and it's been at the heart of the Côte d'Or since the Roman times. In fact, Julius Caesar founded Boone as a Roman camp. And in the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church and the Dukes of Burgundy established the first official vineyards here. The famous Auspice de Boone was built in 1452 as a refuge for the poor and the sick. And through it, the church received gifts from wealthy donors, which included vineyards. Boone's vineyard area expanded and by the 1700s became the main center of business for local wine merchants and today it covers about 15,000 acres. The entire Côte d'Or is a valley with low-lying foothills that run from north to south. One of the many reasons that Burgundy is perfect for wine production is because of its Côte, or its slopes. Almost universally in the wine world, higher quality wines come from hillsides where there's better water drainage and more sun exposure. But the Haute Côte, the high slopes, are a tricky place to grow vines. At elevations of a thousand feet and higher, the grapes ripen very slowly. Typically, you get these wines that are so subtle that they almost seem like they whisper. But context is everything, and in 2019, Burgundy had one of its hottest years on record. And suddenly, these high elevation, cool climate grapes were right in the sweet spot. The Burger family has been in Boone since the times of the French Revolution. And to this day, the winery is still family owned and operated and is a modest 60 acres in size. Their winery is located at the southernmost end of the Boone region where they make their wines from 30 year old vines. And all of their crop is hand harvested. This is real local small production, which is not only common, but predominant. And in contrast to the more in demand names and makers here, this is where you're gonna get a real taste of Burgundy. Let's start with the 2019 Gerard Berger Chardonnay. All right, immediately there's a nuttiness or a toastiness in here, and that comes from something they call lise stirring, or in France they call it batonnage. That's where the winemaker will take the wine and stir it up in the barrel, mix it up with some of the spent yeast cells at the bottom of the barrel to add extra flavor. There's some citrus in there, which is common for Chardonnay, and a nice exotic spice. It reminds me of cardamom. Compared to other Burgundy Shards, these high slope wines are definitely much more light and subtle, but not lacking in flavor. There's a lot of tart green apple in here and a long lemony finish. And that toastiness that comes from the Lees stirring adds another layer of complexity, which is nice. So this is what makes French Chardonnay so distinctly different from the rest of the world. With wines like this, you're tasting the naked grape in all its glory. Pinot Noir is a light wine by nature, so it'll be interesting to see how it fares on the high slopes. Ooh, this is super floral. It's just brimming with red roses. Uh, there's a pungent kind of banana character in there. And there's that spice again in there, just like the first wine. Only this time it's showing itself more like nutmeg or cinnamon. There's a silkiness or a fluffiness here that almost feels like you're eating sorbet rather than drinking wine. There's a bramble of berries in there. And as it finishes off with that spiciness, it just reminds me of autumn in a glass. This wine is soft as a rose petal. And there's a lot going on in there that's kind of hard to define, which begs you to pour another glass and try to figure it out. Wines this light and lilting are great food compliments because they could figuratively dance with almost any partner. <laughs> you could probably switch either of the wines with these dishes here and they would still work. That being said, for the shard, let's go with a crispy chicken cutlet with a white wine lemon sauce. As the flavors of both run in parallel, I think it's a natural pairing. And for the Pinot, how about a heartwarming short rib mac and cheese? The Pinot is really going to accentuate the umami quality of the red meat and cheese here. Even in a wine region as famous and prestigious as Burgundy, it's still possible to find something new and impressive. You just have to travel a bit off the beaten path and in some cases, aim a little higher. I hope you've enjoyed learning about Boone and even more so, its wines. Thanks so much for joining me for this weekly tasting today and I'll see you next time. Cheers.